And I know, Madam Deputy Speaker, that Prime Ministers are not supposed to relay their conversations with the Queen, and I will not, except to say that her knowledge and understanding of politics and world affairs is profound. And there have been times, uh, I'm sure the, right, the Honourable Gentleman uh, knows whereof he speaks, there have been times when I have been scrabbling to remember a historical date or the name of some African capital, and she has got there first. And when it comes to some subjects, anything equestrian, I'm simply nowhere. <laughs> and I bet I speak for every Prime Minister who has ever had an audience with Her Majesty when I say that our conversations are always immensely comforting, because she has seen the sweep of it. And she has seen the cycle from gloom to elation. And every time her country, under her, has gone forward from strength to strength. She has seen an empire transformed into a happy commonwealth that countries are now bidding to join. And in the thousand year history of this place, no monarch has seen such an increase in the longevity or the prosperity or the opportunity or the freedom of the British people. No monarch has seen such technical advances, many of which British scientists have played a leading part, from the dawn of the internet to the use of the world's first approved COVID vaccine. No monarch, by her efforts and dedication and achievement, better deserves the attribute of greatness. And for me, she is already Elizabeth the Great. Yeah. Yeah.